Hello everyone, my name is Tyler and uh, welcome to the first video in a series of tutorial episodes on how to use uh, Unity particle systems and kind of what's going on uh, when you're manipulating them. So if you're new to Unity, I would recommend checking out the link to developer videos that I've included in the description. Um, it's basically a series of videos by the developer that kind of gets you used to moving around in the editor, what Unity's all about, and some good stuff there. So if you're new to Unity, I would recommend checking those out. But if you're not new to Unity, um, then let's let's get started. So the first thing you probably want to know how to do is create a particle system, and it's pretty easy to do that. You just go over to Game Object, Create Other, and then Particle System, and then the default particle system will be spawned um, in your scene. And uh, let me just reset the transform real quick. Um, but the default particle system is basically a cone emitter that, as you can see here, that uh, spews out particles from uh, the bottom of the cone, um, basically out. Uh, of the cone at a constant upwards velocity. So we're going to be messing around with some of the basic uh, variables that you can play around with here and I'll be explaining kind of what each of them do. So the first variable that we can see is duration and this affects the kind of the, the amount of time that the emitter exists in your scene. Um, so for example I'm going to turn this off real quick and then um, if right now the emitter lasts for five seconds so if we click the simulate button the emitter will play particles for five seconds and then it'll be destroyed um, so then the you, go, you can see that the particles are no longer um, being created by the emitter if we change it to let's say one and then stop and simulate it again you can see that the emitter will only play particles for one second as the emitter itself is destroyed after one second so let's reset that and then explain the next variable which is looping um, if you click this little box the particle system will basically have the pretend that the emitter has an infinite lifetime so that the emitter will just constantly keep spewing particles out of your particle system and then this was pretty handy when you're editing particle systems as you don't have to worry about uh, constantly resetting and starting the particle system over over again um, Preworm is basically uh, when you select the particle system in the editor or when the particle system is spawned, it will start uh, playing particles as if it has already been through one uh, duration cycle um, for your emitter. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Um, so right now you can see that this, when we select and play the emitter, the particles will start from the very bottom and go up for the top because that's what the beginning of the cycle for the particle system looks like. And if I select this, the particle systems will start playing as if they've already been um, looping uh, in the system. So you can kind of see what that looks like. I'm going to turn it off and then stop it. And then um, start delay is something that I'll explain a bit more in later videos. It um, basically has to do with uh, multiple particle systems. When you want kind of a delayed effect for an emitter to start playing particles, you can uh, input a value here. And then let's say I wanted the emitter to like pause for two seconds before playing particles. When I spawn the emitter, you can uh, basically specify that here. Um, but I'll talk about that in later videos when we're working around with multiple particle systems. Um, the next thing is start lifetime. Um, this basically determines how long the particles themselves will uh, exist in the scene. So as you can imagine, if you lower that number, the particles will exist for a uh, much shorter time. And if you increase the number, as you can see, the particles will last for a much longer time. The next thing is uh, speed, which we will is also kind of uh, self-explanatory. If you lower the number, the particles will be much slower. If you increase the number, the particles will move uh, much more quickly. Now, the interesting thing about start speed is it's tied to the emitter shape, and since we have a cone emitter, the particles will have a speed that's kind of determined by the cone itself. I'll talk about this in the next couple of videos, um, and you can kind of see how the shape affects the speed of um, your particle systems. So I'm going to reset this real quick and then talk about size. So the size of your particles is also kind of self-explanatory. It'll determine the size of the texture that is displayed by your particle. So if you can increase the number, the, the size of the texture will be much larger. And if you decrease the number, it'll be much smaller. Oh, another thing that I uh, forgot to mention is you can use, uh, excuse me, um, you can use uh, decimal points and negatives for some of these uh, values. Like for example, you can use decimal points for size um, but you and you can use like negative no values for speed if you really wanted to. Um, but for some of them, you it's pretty inadvisable to do that. Like it's 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 not recommended to have a negative size because Unity will just treat it as if it has a size of zero because having a negative size doesn't really make sense. So let me reset the speed real quick and then we can move on. Um, so start rotation is um, basically determining 
the starting rotation of the texture displayed by your particle. Since I'm going to be talking about textures in a later video and you can't really see the rotation in this video since it's a symmetrical white sphere, I will uh, leave that to a later video. The next thing that we're going to talk about is color. And as you can imagine, you can change the color of your particle using uh, the nifty things over here. You can have, there's a palette for you to use if you want to use that. Um, there's also sliders, and you can input uh, the specific RGB values over here if you want. Another thing that you can use with the color variable in Unity, in Unity <laughs> excuse me, um, is uh, transparency. And uh, that's represented by the alpha value here. So if you have a higher alpha value, your particle is more opaque. If you have a lower alpha value, your particle is more transparent. So that's pretty uh, pretty good to have and pretty good to, uh, kind of fun to uh, mess around with. The next thing that we have is a gravity multiplier. And basically what that does is if you uh, insert a value here from what zero to whatever uh, kind of number you feel like, it'll apply a downwards uh, gravity force to your particles and your particles will accelerate downwards over a period of time. Um, so that's pretty fun to have. Let me reset that. The next thing that we're going to talk about is inherent velocity. And what that uh, does is basically if you turn that on or put a value in here, this will say, okay, inherit 100% of the velocity of your um, the system that you're spawning the particle system on. Because in Unity, you can attach different kind of objects to each other. And if the parent object is uh, moving at a certain speed and you're spawning a child, child particle system on it, um, it'll basically inherit the velocity of that parent system and take it into account as your system is moving around. Uh, it's a bit complicated and I'll explain it a bit more in later videos, but so you don't really have to worry about it right now. I'll turn that off. Uh, the next important thing to talk about is simulation space, and this basically determines if your particle system is affected by um, its position in the world and how the world is kind of relative to it. And that's a bit complicated, so I'm going to kind of show you um, how that works. If you have it as a local simulation space, the emitter will basically ignore any and all movements and weird rotations that you have um, done to the emitter. And if you have it on world, the emitter will basically, as you can see here, be affected by any movements and stuff that you have to the emitter, to the emitter uh, in your game. So depending on if you want your emit uh, emitter to be kind of more static or if it's more dynamic and attached to like objects that are moving around in your game world, you may want to have it uh, in the world simulation space or the local simulation space. Play on awake, uh, when, it's, when you import your particle into your game, this will determine if the system um, is going to be playing automatically when it's spawned or if it's going to wait for a message from the game in order to start uh, spawning particles. Uh, maximum number of particles is also um, pretty self-explanatory. This is the maximum number of particles that your system is allowed to, uh, to spawn before the system starts uh, cutting off the, the spawning of your particles by the emitter. So if you make this to a less number and increase the number of particles that we are emitting, you can see that there's these cutoff periods uh, for the particle until these particles are actually destroyed. So that's how maximum um, number of particles works. Um, and that's basically it for the this video. Um, we talked about uh, the basics of all of these valuables right here. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video.